back with another take and make kit. This week we are making dream catchers and we're making dream catchers in honor of Aboriginal Storyteller Month, which is the month of February. So just to start, I just want to acknowledge that our library is on Treaty 2 land, which is the traditional homeland of the Anishinaabek, the Assiniboine, the Lakota and the Métis people. So we just want to make that recognition known for everybody out there. So if you would have stopped by the library, you would have picked up your kits and everything in your kit is here and ready so we can get crafting and we can make our own dream catchers. guys let's get making our crafts so when you picked up your kit you would have got a pie plate actually a paper plate with holes cut in it already you're gonna get some feathers some beads and you've got some string so what you'll need at home is some scissors uh, some glue and then some markers and stuff if you would like to decorate the outside of your dream catcher so let's go first step we're gonna take our scissors and we need to cut the inside of this plate out so you may need help from mom or dad or an older sibling somebody to get a hole poked and started. And then once you do, you are going to snip around the outside of your plate. Like so. My scissors are a little big for this gig, so uh, making it a little hard to get around the circle. But so when you cut it at home, try and use a smaller pair of scissors that uh, fit a little bit easier inside this pie plate. Once you get going, it's okay, but the first few snips are always a little bit difficult. All right, here we go. We've got our cutout frame for our dream catcher. So when you got your string, it's been cut into a few pieces. So some of them are longer than one another and some of them are shorter. So when you pull your string apart, don't do like I did. Don't make a big giant mess. Be gentle with it. Maybe pull it apart in advance because wow, I've got a heck of a mess going. But there we go, we've got one string out. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the end of our string and we are going to feed it through any one of our holes. Doesn't matter which hole is first. And we're gonna try and tie our knot on the back side of our dream catcher. So we've got one string. So now we need to do our stringing. Now in your kit, I sent a piece of paper, which told you which order to string your dream catcher in, right? So that's gonna be super handy. I'm just gonna do this by memory and hope that I've got it right. But feel free to follow along with your sheet. So here we go, we've got one strung. We're gonna come back over top. And we're gonna find the opposite one so that we've got a bit of a V going on here. All right, come on, come on. String, D, string, string, string. Now also in your kit is the story of the dream catcher, where it came from, the origins of it, and why it is important to our indigenous people. Okay, so we've got our V. Now we're gonna come straight across and poke that through. You're gonna kinda end up in your first one again. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get the string to pop through these holes. Sometimes, especially when your nails are too long. I'm just gonna use my scissors to help feed it through a little bit. There we go, I got it. I got it, I got it. String, string, string. We're gonna try and keep our string just a little bit taut here so that if we let it go too loose, we're gonna have a very loose, wobbly dream catcher. Okay, so we're over here. Now we are going to go over to this one. I'm gonna use my scissors again because I feel like it'll be faster for my... So string, string, string. I'm gonna keep stringing and I will catch up with you guys once I've got all of my stringing done. Okay guys, we are back. As you can see, I have got my dream catcher strung and I've taken the time to decorate it a little bit. Um, yeah, just to make it look cute. So the next step I want you to do is you're gonna take all of your long pieces of string and you're gonna cut them all to the same length. Now I used an arm's length for my distance, so I take it, pull it out to my armpit, and then 
take that, pull it back out, cut it, cut it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go and you are going to cut all of the string that you have left over into arms, legs, pieces, and then you're going to come back and we are gonna keep rolling, okay? Okay, so you are back and you've cut up all your strings. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna decide where your top and where your bottom is gonna be. I made a little whoopsie do right here, so this is where my bottom's gonna be. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a single string, we're gonna fold it in half, and then we are going to slide it underneath our dream catcher, and then we're gonna take the two tails that are left, and we are going to pull it down, okay? So we're gonna keep doing that, keep repeating. This is called a lurk's head knot. So make your loop, pull it through, straighten it. So let's keep going. So we're gonna go, we've got our loop, slide it underneath, pull our tails through, and tighten. All right, so go ahead, make all your lark's head knots here with all of your string, and then we will uh, move on to decorating our strings. Okay guys, we're back. As you can see, I've got all of my strings tied on nicely. All of my knots are uniform. And now we're on to the fun part. So in your kit, you've got your beads and you've got your feathers. It is up to you to decorate your dream catcher as you like. So go ahead and take your glue stick. You may need your glue to add a little bit of glue to the tip of your feather. You can um, take it, you can feed your feather or your beads onto your strings and then use your glue on your feather and feed it in there and uh, decorate it as you like. So go ahead, be creative, get decorating and then we will come back and we can compare what we've made, okay? All right guys, we've got our bottom strings all decorated up. It took a little bit of time, but you know what? That's all right. So we've got one last step before we are done. So you're gonna find after you cut all your arms length of string, you're probably gonna be left with some random piece, right? Not quite as long as the rest, but that's all right because we are gonna use this to hang our dream catcher. So we're gonna slide our dream catcher around. We're gonna find our top middle spot. And remember that lark's head knot that I showed you from before with the loop and the pull? You are going to do that again. And this is what you're gonna use to um, hang your dream catcher up with. Now it's up to you if you wanna just leave it like a string like this. If you wanna leave it like this, you can go ahead, tie a knot. If you have some extra beads left, feel free to bead it up. And then you just go from there. Then you hang it above your bed and it should catch all of the bad dreams and leave you with good ones. So I hope you enjoyed our craft and I hope you enjoyed your little handout explaining the story behind a dream catcher so the next time you see one anywhere, you know what it's for. Now hopefully you guys have sweet dreams and you have a great day. Bye.